Hey everybody, this is Jay Moore. I'm the founder of the group, The Ordinary Christian. And today I want to talk with you about how you can learn to love Jesus more than you love anybody else. That's right. How to love Jesus more than anybody else. In this uh, video, we're going to learn one surefire strategy that will help you accomplish that goal. You see, the Bible says, Jesus actually says, if you love anybody more than you love me, you're not worthy of my disciple. But for many people, that is a hard goal to reach for because we love our family. We love our friends. We love our neighbors. I mean, we love people and we're even commanded by God to do that. So how in the world could we ever love Jesus more than we love anybody or anything else? So we're going to learn a surefire strategy for accomplishing that. It is found in James chapter one, starting with verse 17. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. One of the things that uh, really brought me into clear focus about this particular uh, subject is during a conversation that that me and my son-in-law, well, he, was, he wasn't my son-in-law at that time, future son-in-law, was having. Uh, he was kind of struggling a little bit with his faith. He believed in God. He believed in Jesus. But some of the demands of following Christ that Jesus gives, like this one, love me more than you love anybody or anything else, was weighing heavy on him. And so he asked me a question. He says, I love my sons. He has two other sons before my, him and my daughter got married. He says, I, I love my sons with all my heart. I love your daughter more than I love anybody else. How am I supposed to love Jesus more than I love them? And I sat there and I, I mean, that's a good question because, you know, we do have family. We have parents. We have siblings. We have friends. We have children. We have spouses that we do love, care for deeply. And, and the Bible tells us to. So how in the world do we love them more than we love Jesus. He says, I want, I love Jesus, but I can't honestly say I love Jesus more than I love them. How am I supposed to do that? And as I heard that question, it came to me. I, it, it was one of those divine moments when all of a sudden you have clarity in your thought. And it was just that Bible verse I read to you. The one where it says, let me read it to you again. Hebrews not Hebrews, James chapter one, verse 17 says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. You know, that Bible verse is telling us that all of the good things that we have in life, all of these wonderful, amazing things that bring us such joy and happiness are gifts that come down from God. God, our Father, loves us so much that he's allowed us to have these people in our lives. I mean, I've, I'm the youngest of six kids. I, I have five older sisters. I can't ask for better sisters. I love my sisters. They have been so good to me. God has, you know, given me a wonderful wife that I've been married to now for over 45 years. I can't imagine having a better wife than my wife. I love her with all of my heart. But here, the Bible tells us that my wife and my sisters are gifts from God to me. And then I, I shared with my son-in-law, it says, you know, think of your, your sons, think of my daughter, who's going to be your wife, as these wonderful gifts that God has given to you. They are his expression of love for you, giving you these people to be in your life. They're your gifts. Then I said, this is where God gave it to me. He says, we are parents. We love our kids and we give our kids, we give our children, we give our spouses things that, you know, to be expression of our love for them. We give them gifts as an expression of our love for them. And when we're kids and we're getting gifts, we love those gifts. 
We, 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 we truly love those gifts. They're the best thing. But as we get older, as we mature, we learn to understand and we grow to understanding that somebody thought of us to give us that gift. Our parents thought of us or our spouse thought of us and bought us that gift. And, and while we, we truly do love the gift and we think they're wonderful, we begin to appreciate the giver of the gift. We love the giver of the gift more than we actually love the gift. And if God, the Father, loves us who are his children so much that he gave us a wonderful son or a wonderful daughter, gave us a wonderful wife or a, an amazing husband, he's given us great friendships that we have. He thought of us and he brought these people into our lives so that we would love them and appreciate them. We begin to realize but it's the giver, our Heavenly Father, who is better and greater than actually the gift. And we learn to love the giver of the gift more than we actually love the gift. And when I shared that with him, it was like a light went on into his head. And he said, now I can get my head around that. I can get my head around that. And I share this with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus, is the giver of every perfect gift. They have come down from the Father of lights to bless us. Doesn't the giver of the gift deserve more love than the gift itself? The one who thought of us, the one who did for us, doesn't he deserve our affection, our love, our devotion, more than the gifts that he gave us, the spouse, the children. Of course he does. We know that. So this is a surefire way to help you get your head wrapped around it, to learn to love God more than you love others, to learn to love Jesus more than you love anybody or anything else. Hey, listen, if you like this video, uh, if you've found this to be helpful, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, share this with other people, and please, please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Let's, let's get into a discussion and keep coming back regularly because I'm going to be putting more and more of this content in place because the ordinary Christian exists to empower, encourage, and equip ordinary Christians to live powerful missional lives that brightly shine the light of Christ in their part of this dark world. Take care. God bless you. We'll see you later.